my background is that I grew up in upstate New York uh, where there were no minority families except for mine. Uh, there was no Asians or, uh, except for mine. There was no blacks, there was no Hispanics. I was the only uh, Asian in my school except for my sisters. And so most of the time, um, I s most of my childhood I spent trying to forget that I was Asian. Um, and I spent a lot of time um, trying to pretend that I wasn't. Asian and really basically rejecting my parents' culture. And it was only when I grew older that I realized that it was something that I felt I had lost. I realized it was actually something very wonderful that I had rejected all these years. And so my books are kind of my way to kind of recapture the culture that I feel that I've lost. It's kind of my way of trying to find my own roots. I think The Ugly Vegetables is my favorite picture book, and I think that's my favorite because it's just, it's my first, um, my very first book that um, I wrote and illustrated that was published, and it's about my mom, and so that's about my mother and I. Um, it's based on a childhood memory where uh, she would grow Chinese vegetables in her garden while everybody else in the neighborhood would grow flowers. And I used to be so embarrassed that she would do that. And so I wrote this whole story about that. And um, when it became the book, The Ugly Vegetables. And so I would say that's probably my favorite picture book. Right now, my favorite novel is probably that I've written and illustrated is um, probably Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. It was only many, many, many years later after I'd grown up and I started to want to embrace my roots more and I went to China and Taiwan and Hong Kong that these stories that I read as a child, these Chinese fairy tales that I thought hadn't made much of an impression on me came back to me. And all of a sudden everything I saw in China and, and in Taiwan and Hong Kong, it reminded me of those fairy tale books, but I couldn't remember the stories that well because they were so poorly written <laughs> and they were from such a long time ago that I started kind of making up my own storylines and my own characters and that's what became Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. And the reason why Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, even though it's a novel, um, it has these full color illustrations in it is because of my desire when I was younger for those Chinese fairy tale books to be just as beautifully illustrated as the European fairy tale books. When I was in Rome, I started feeling very strange about copying all this Renaissance art. And I started thinking, oh, how come I'm always just copying all this art around me and there's nothing about me in my art? And I realized there was nothing about me and my culture in my art. So I started um, looking at a bunch of Chinese art and I looked at some Chinese folk art. And it was the Chinese folk art that I really loved. And Chinese folk art is um, very bright colors. Uh, there's lots of patterns. Um, they, there's layers and layers of, of patterns and colors all over in decorative elements. And um, at the same time at school, while I was looking at this Chinese folk art, I was also studying Henry Matisse. And Henry Matisse's art looked a lot like this Chinese folk art. So I kind of thought that was really neat how these two artists on either side of the world, Henry Matisse and these Chinese folk artists, they were doing artwork that was pretty similar, but, um, but they were completely different. And I kind of thought it was like East and West meeting. And I thought, well, I'd like to do something like that in my artwork, it's an East and West kind of meeting. So uh, I took elements from both both of those styles of art and kind of created my own art. I think one of the uh, things that I've been very lucky about is that I'm an author and an illustrator. So that's given me a really great opportunity where my I feel that my words and pictures really, really mesh together. That's the, that's the goal um, for any illustrator. Um, I would think, especially in the picture books, hopefully they would see things um, that go beyond the words, especially for uh, picture books like Dim Sum for Everyone, where it it's, seems very simple and it's just about dim sum and it's just about these uh, dishes that come on the table. But hopefully when you see the story and in the pictures, you also get a sense of family, you also get a sense of tradition, you also get a sense of uh, closeness and love. So those are, those are things that you don't write in the words, but hopefully they see in the pictures.